Hey, my name's Ben, uh, Ben Mitchell. I'm uh, a climber and a skier and a mountain biker and uh, and an emergency nurse as well. Um, and I've been doing all these things for most of my life now. Um, and uh, you know, through it all, I've become a, a mountain guide and I take people skiing and climbing and, and adventuring in the outdoors. And it's really changed you know, my perspective on life, and I feel like it's given me uh, a, lot of, a lot of reasons to, to keep moving along and be excited about being alive in general and doing things. So I started out as a little kid hiking with my family and doing kind of the normal sports that most kids do. I you know, played soccer and uh, basketball and, and ran in high school, and then in college I started getting more into the outdoors and really got into rock climbing and mountain climbing and skiing and that really changed the whole trajectory of my life. I think uh, there was a point there where I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself and I definitely found some purpose and, and uh, found a group of people that I could really bond with and associate with through these adventures. Um, and that really goes a long way when you kind of find some things that you can connect with and you find some people that you can connect with. Um, so that's probably some of the biggest things I got out of these. Going out and, and planning these trips and then and spending time with your partners to plan these trips and then going and making them happen is, is uh, very fulfilling, I would say. Um, some of my biggest adventures and accomplishments that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, there was one year that I went with a group of friends. Uh, we, we got a bunch of grants that we worked really hard to write um, some proposals for. So we were able to get grants and we, were, we went to Afghanistan. And there's a bunch of big, um, you know, 8,000 meter peaks, or not 8,000, 7,000 meter peaks. Uh, six and seven thousand meter peaks in Afghanistan, so really tall, high altitude places, um, and really rugged. Nobody had ever skied there before, so we went. <coughs> no, excuse me. Um, we went and we were able to fly into Istanbul and drive across multiple countries. Um, to get to Afghanistan and we didn't even know if we were going to have the right visas to get in and there was four of us crammed in these little vehicles with tons of gear for a month-long expedition and we were able to get in and we were able to to drive for you know four days I think through some of the most rugged mountain terrain you could imagine to get to these big peaks in the walk-on corridor and we were able to climb and, and ski some first descents there um, and just the experience of adventure and not knowing what was going to happen and meeting all these local people. Everybody was so overly friendly and welcoming in a place that um, we kind of had this expectation that we weren't going to meet people who were very excited to see us. We were, you know, as, as uh, Americans, these U.S. citizens, it's hard to imagine this place that we're at war with that would just love us. And I think that changed my perspective a bit, you know, on what we know in general from the news or from other things, which is important to follow, but it's not always the whole truth. You know, we got there and the local people on the ground loved us and were so friendly and welcoming and excited that we were doing what we were doing. So that's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, one of my biggest setbacks, I've had some pretty serious injuries over the years, um, and they can be pretty debilitating at times. I've, uh, I've had multiple knee surgeries, um, I've had some shoulder surgeries and dislocations and broken bones and uh, one year I broke my back um, so that's a big deal so uh, I think you know you learn some resiliency through those because you're they're a little bit eye-opening because you get these major injuries doing some of these sports and um, all of a sudden you realize am I gonna be able to keep doing these things and um, you have these moments of uncertainty and I think that from the uncertainty, you can you can come back stronger. You know, it gives you time to reevaluate what's really important, um, 
and then he gives you time to do the rehab, which is a different mental game. It takes some strength there to, to work hard and follow the program and, and uh, go in every day to the gym or every day go to the pool or whatever it might be um, that you don't really necessarily want to do. You want to be out there doing the fun part of things, but sometimes you need to put the time in to get stronger again. Um, I used to do a lot of you know, flying paragliders and flying wingsuits and base jumping and these things. And, and those were some of the most amazing trips in my life. And once again, made some amazing friends that, that I'm still very close to today, even though I don't do those sports anymore. I think there's a time and a place where you kind of just got to walk away from some of these higher risk activities. And, um, but they've definitely cost me. And, and I think that's something to realize the risk involved in a lot of these things is pretty high and evaluating um, that stuff is tough and sometimes that's harder when you don't have the same perspective that you do when you get older um, or not just older but when you're doing these sports for long enough you can also realize you know you can lose friends you can risk your own life um, these are real considerations that sometimes we have to take into account um, but you, know, you can also learn a lot from putting yourself in the situation. So I think balancing the risk versus reward and, and some of these things we can do in a more controlled way with pretty low risk, but you still are able to get a huge benefit from learning how to evaluate risk. And you can take that into your life. So nowadays, um, you know, whether you work in a business environment as an, you know, when you get go get a different career or, you know, I'm a nurse, like I said, and, and the ability to walk into situations and evaluate some risk is they're the same systems that we use in the outdoors to evaluate avalanche hazard is, is you know, we put these, these ideas into practice and they really pay off um, in other aspects of our life. Um, and then I, I want to you know, touch back on, I think res resiliency is a, a big thing as far as, you know, if you go out and you go camping for a couple nights and it's your first time, you know, and you're a little bit cold, it teaches you, you know, how do you plan better next time? It teaches you, okay, am I too cold now that I need to quit? Or am I just cold enough that like I, I can suffer a little bit and that's okay? Um, or, you know, you're going out to do a big day in the mountains and and it, it all of a sudden you're at a 12 hour day and you're still, you know, you know you got another four hours left before you're back to your tent, you know, are you able to dig deeper? And, and that, I think that learning how to work hard and learning how to suffer a little bit uh, really pays off and in the end can be some of the most gratifying and fulfilling experiences you could have. So I think you know, the outdoors and, and doing these activities has really shaped my life and, and the nice thing is it'll continue to be part of my life hopefully forever. Like I have a hard time imagining the day that I won't go for a hike and won't go for a run and won't go skiing. Um, you know, it might not be taking a month to go to Afghanistan or taking a month to go to Baffin Island. Um, but instead it'll be taking a day to go out in the backcountry. And that's another thing is you, these, these things can be lifelong skills and that's pretty amazing. Cool, see how that goes.